Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles and it appears that for once at least the opening of my World of Warships intro is now 100% accurate because yesterday, at least on the EU server, if you were on the North American server you got it the day before which may go some way towards explaining the sudden and inexplicable popularity of North American World of Warships live streamers on Wednesday night. <laughs> but the CV, the aircraft carrier rework, is now live. Although I should probably clarify what I mean when I say it's live. It's on the live server. But they're not finished testing. Not by a long shot. There's a limit to how much meaningful test data you can get from a, a change as big as this on the test server, because the test server is not a real environment. Everybody's either playing aircraft carriers, AA cruisers, or battleships with particularly strong AA. If you want to know how things are going to work, you pretty much have to put it on the live server. And for at least the first week, that's exactly what's happening on the live server as well. Everybody's either playing aircraft carriers. At one point I was queuing up. There were 63 people waiting to play aircraft carriers, 9 in cruisers, 2 in battleships, and nobody in destroyers. <laughs> so right now, and probably for most of the next week, they're probably not going to be able to get much in the way of meaningful data from the live server either. At least until everybody takes a chill pill, calms the hell down, and stops playing just aircraft carriers and cruisers and battleships, and in some cases destroyers, that have god tier AA. One thing that we are all definitely going to have to get used to, however, regardless of what changes they do decide to implement over the course of the next few weeks or even the next month, but the one thing that we are going to have to get used to is this style of carrier gameplay, because it is not going away. It is here to stay, whether you like it or not. And there are a lot of people who don't like it, at least I assume there are a lot of people who don't like it, judging by the amount of people on the forums claiming that Wargaming have killed World of Warships and everybody is going to quit and stop playing. And there are certainly a couple of things that I don't particularly like about it, and which I think could be improved, but before we get on to those, I have to admit, Wargaming have achieved exactly what it was that they said they wanted to do with the aircraft carrier rework. They've made it much more simple and accessible, so that any old Tom, Dick or Harry can have a go at an aircraft carrier and not completely suck, you know, if, at least if they're capable of thinking and breathing at the same time. But more importantly, at least in my opinion, they have also fixed the issue that even if the aircraft carrier player or players on your team are not capable of thinking and breathing at the same time, and the carrier or carriers on the enemy team are, it is no longer a guaranteed 100% certain loss for your team. Because aircraft carriers no longer have the same concentration of power in their hands that can be exploited ruthlessly to the benefit of your team if that player is on your team, and guarantee certain defeat for you if that player is on the enemy team. It's not that you can't influence the outcome of the battle in an aircraft carrier anymore, you absolutely can. But no more and no less than anybody in a destroyer, cruiser or battleship. And that is exactly the way it should be. But Jingles, I've been living under a rock with no internet access for the last three months. What, what, what's this aircraft carrier rework going on about? Well, let's take it down to tier four and I'll explain. First of all, Wargaming have made an unusual decision and I'm not entirely sure why, and I don't think I've ever heard them explain the reasons why, but they've decided that, at least for now, we're only going to have aircraft carriers at even tiers, starting at tier 4. So, tier 4, tier 6, tier 8, and tier 10. Obviously, that's not going to be an issue for tier 10 aircraft carriers, because they're always going to be top tier, and it's not going to be such an issue for tier 4 aircraft carriers like the Hosho and the USS Langley here, because... Thanks to Tier 4 matchmaking, they're never going to see anything higher than Tier 5. But it is likely to be a problem for Tier 6 and Tier 8 aircraft carriers, because they can, will, and do get into battles with ships two tiers higher than them. And I'll come on to that in a moment, because that's one of the big problems that I do have with the aircraft carrier rework, particularly for Tier 8 carriers, because Tier 10 anti-aircraft firepower is absolutely brutal. But like I said, We'll go into that in more detail later on. For now, we're down here at Tier 4. We have three different types of aircraft available to us. Attack planes, which I'm flying now, which are on with rockets. 
and your traditional dive bombers and torpedo bombers. Down here at tier 4, things are both slower paced and much more simple. Now if you're thinking that you're going to be absolutely dominating in a tier 4 aircraft carrier because down at tier 4 hardly anybody has meaningful anti-aircraft firepower, think again. Because you don't have much firepower at tier 4 either. Your squadrons are small, they don't carry a lot of weapons, and the aircraft are very, very slow. Now while it is undeniably true down here at tier 4 that unless you sail into an entire cluster of enemy ships with overlapping anti-aircraft bubbles, you're probably not going to get too many of your aircraft shot down. But even though that may be the case, that squadron of attack planes only consisted of six aircraft, and three aircraft were used in each attack, which means I've only got to attack twice with that entire squadron, and then they all return to the carrier, and it takes them a while to get back. However, the aircraft engineers on the carrier haven't been sitting idle once that squadron first launched. They're getting fresh aircraft up from the hangar, onto the flight deck, prepped and ready to go. And they've only just now ready a second full squadron of six rocket attack planes. If any of those aircraft had been shot down either during or after the attacks, I would have to wait longer for them to get that squadron of six attack planes ready again. Now that doesn't mean I couldn't have taken off again instantly with a squadron of attack planes. I could, but it wouldn't have been a full squadron. Even under the best possible circumstances, if I wanted to take off again with rocket aircraft immediately, it would probably only have been a squadron of four or five. And so I didn't. I gave them time to finish servicing the aircraft, and instead I'm conducting an attack with my torpedo bombers. So the Langley's torpedo bombers, as you can see, consist of three aircraft, and each attack is conducted by one aircraft, and each aircraft only carries one torpedo. And I've seriously miscalculated just how quickly this cruiser is moving, and that torpedo is going to miss. So that aircraft now has no weapons and is returning to the carrier, and I continue to press on the attack with the two remaining aircraft in the squadron. Just take a look at the bottom of the screen for a moment, and you can see the replenishment progress of my torpedo bomber squadrons back on the carrier. If I was to lose both of these torpedo bombers right now, I would only have two torpedo bombers ready to go on the flight deck of the carrier at this precise moment. It would not be a full squadron. Now, but hang on a second. He said that squadrons of torpedo bombers consisted of three aircraft. That number at the bottom of the screen, well, OK, now it says three of five and torpedo bombers are ready for takeoff. But what do you mean three of five? Well, the squadrons only consisted of three aircraft. Well, that's true. And I now have a second torpedo bomber squadron ready to take off if I need it. But I can have up to five torpedo bombers ready and waiting on the flight deck at any given time. If I have five torpedo bombers sitting and waiting to go on the flight deck, I can launch a squadron of three, and the remaining two will just sit there while the flight engineers ready a third aircraft to make up another full squadron. And it's the same thing for my attack planes and my dive bombers. I can have up to nine of them ready and waiting to go on the flight deck, even though the individual squadrons that take off only consist of six aircraft. So there's a little bit of margin for error there. But remember, all of this only works flawlessly, assuming you're not getting any aircraft shot down. My squadrons are only being recycled as quickly as they are, because once each aircraft has expended its ammunition, it's turning around flying back to the carrier. And all the deck crews have to do is wipe the windscreen, top off the fuel tanks, and strap a fresh torpedo to the airframe. They don't have to actually physically winch a new aircraft up from the hangar onto the flight deck and repeat the process. So it's only really down here at Tier 4 where you see aircraft carrier flight deck operations being carried out with clockwork efficiency like this. And that happens at Tier 4 for two main reasons. First, aircraft carriers at Tier 4 do not have the fighter consumable. We'll see how that works later. But it means that Tier 4 aircraft carriers only have to worry about anti-aircraft fire, and they don't have to worry about fighters. And at Tier 4 and 5, anti-aircraft firepower is pretty bad. Well, there are exceptions. This is the Yubari. It's a premium Tier 4 Japanese cruiser, although calling it a cruiser is a bit of a stretch. I mean, it is a cruiser, but it's really just a big destroyer. It only has two gun turrets, one at the front, one at the back. Uh, although it does have one secondary turret with a single 120mm gun, 
but even the main gun batteries only consist of four 140mm guns. And the reload isn't great either. It has two torpedo launchers, and its anti-aircraft firepower is actually pretty bad. It has an AA rating of 15. That's five less than the Miyogi, and nobody gets excited about the Miyogi's anti-aircraft firepower. But the Yubari does have one thing that nobody else gets at Tier 4. Hell, it's got one thing that nobody else gets at Tier 5. That, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is the defensive anti-aircraft fire consumable. Now, before you start getting too excited, it does not get a lot of charges. In fact, you're never going to have more than three shots of that defensive AA fire. That's with premium consumables and the superintendent skill. I don't have the superintendent skill on my Yubari, although it's going to be the next choice. So I only have two shots of defensive AA fire. But used at the right time, even though the ship only has a base anti-aircraft firepower rating of 15, that consumable used at the right time is going to make tier 4 aircraft carrier players cry themselves to sleep at night. Well, Jingles, you only shot down two aircraft. Yeah, but that's two-thirds of the squadron. <laughs> okay. The one aircraft that made it through did manage to get the torpedo into the Wyoming because he pulled a knotzer and managed to run himself aground in front of multiple incoming attack waves of aircraft. I mean, there are dive bomber squadrons coming in now from both of the aircraft carriers on the enemy team. And I'm not going to be able to save the Wyoming. But what I am doing is causing significant problems for both of the aircraft carriers on the enemy team. They both concentrated their attacks against that Wyoming, and they did sink the Wyoming, but it cost them two-thirds of a torpedo bomber squadron and a third of a dive bomber squadron. I eventually shot four of these aircraft down. That means that one or both of those two aircraft carriers are no longer able to launch a follow-up attack on anybody else with a torpedo bomber squadron or a dive bomber squadron for the next couple of minutes because they're busy winching fresh aircraft up from the hangars rather than just servicing aircraft that are sitting on the deck or replenishing aircraft that are returning from successful strikes because they're not returning from successful strikes. They're getting shot down. Now, it's probably true that Tier 4 aircraft carrier players are not going to have to worry about this particular problem too much because there are not a huge number of Yubaris around in Tier 4 and 5 battles. At least there aren't right now, although I suspect that suddenly and inexplicably they may become quite popular in Tier 4 and 5 battles. But at Tier 6 and 8, while you can't get deplaned because you are constantly servicing and regenerating new aircraft, Running out of full squadrons is a very real issue, particularly if you get up-tiered into Tier 8 and Tier 10 battles. This is HMS Furious. She was commissioned in 1916 as a courageous class battle cruiser, and then by 1925 she'd been converted into what was known as a flush-deck aircraft carrier. She's not particularly pretty to look at, but being a bit of an ugly duckling is the least of her problems right now because this is a Tier 8 battle. In fact, I can honestly say that I have absolutely no idea how Tier 8 and Tier 6 aircraft carriers perform when they're top tier, because so far it has never happened. If you were to ask me, well, how do they play when they're bottom tier, or if the answer to that is very, very carefully, because I have extensive experience of that. And that's probably not going to change for at least the next couple of weeks until everybody's gotten over the novelty and worked the whole aircraft carrier thing out of their system. For now, however, if you're playing Tier 6 or Tier 8 aircraft carriers, you're in for a bit of a rough ride. Oh, hello. Enemy carrier's attack plane spotted. What are they doing over there? Are they perhaps scouting ahead for an enemy destroyer? Well, that's my assumption. So that's why I'm... And yet I'm surface spotted by something. So there is a destroyer around here somewhere trying to sneak a cap. And that's exactly why I'm in the attack planes, because they're armed with rockets, and they're, they're great for hitting destroyers. And I've just spotted him. There he is. It's an Anshan. So that's a Tier 6 Pan-Asian destroyer. And I'm taking fire from his anti-aircraft guns. And look at the health bar of these attack planes. So I'm swinging around to try to respot this Anshan. There he is. And get a successful attack off. And I will get a successful attack off because at the end of the day it is just a destroyer. And it's just a Tier 6 destroyer. So... The first element of the strike package gets their rockets away and successfully manages to return to the carrier, but the survivors are not looking very healthy at all. 
and just over there by the volcano you can see the enemy carrier has activated his fighter consumable and that red circle on the minimap is a massive no fun zone for aircraft now luckily they were just shot down I am now attempting to reacquire the Anshan and whereas before it was just one tier 6 destroyer shooting at my aircraft on the far side of the island up ahead there is also a Hatsuhari. Now I do respot the Anshan, which admittedly is going to be no fun whatsoever for him, but I am too close when I see him to be able to conduct a successful rocket attack, but I'm now getting fired at by both his and the Hatsuharu's and the aircraft guns. And the Hatsuharu is on the far side of a volcano. Anti-aircraft guns fire through solid objects. My rockets don't. So what you're now looking at are the dregs of a tier 6 aircraft carrier strike package after getting shot at by two tier 6 destroyers. Yeah. Now to be completely fair there are actually two bright sides to this. First and foremost, even though I didn't do a whole lot of damage, I did make life extremely miserable for the captain of that Anshan and prevented him from capping. So we have now taken control of that capture point. The second bright side is because I did actually keep that squadron of rocket attack planes alive as long as I did. I didn't actually lose that many of them. The deck crews on the Furious have a full squadron of attack planes ready to go again. But you saw what happened if I got caught within the fire envelope of two tier 6 destroyers at the same time. It wasn't pretty. What happens if your tier 6 aircraft end up getting shot at by something that isn't a destroyer and isn't tier 6? Well, let's put that to the test, shall we? I'm hunting that Anshan again, and you never know your luck, maybe the Hatsuharu. Now pay close attention to that stretch of open water on the far side of the island just ahead of me. There's a Fuso, but I'm well outside of his the aircraft gun range. Oh, I'm inside somebody's anti-aircraft gun range. Oh, it's a Helena, I should turn away, and it didn't matter really, did it? I just lost half of the squadron instantly and I didn't even see the Helena until he started shooting at me because my detection range is nine kilometers he will see me coming from nine kilometers away and he doesn't even have to focus me because his anti-aircraft guns are automatic he may not have even been aware that he's just shot three aircraft down <laughs> but I'm aware of it oh hell yeah and it, it may have actually been worse than that. I might have lost the entire squadron without being able to do anything about it because the Helen is only tier 7. Imagine if that had been a Cleveland. Yeah. Welcome to tier 6 aircraft carriers in tier 8 battles. It's rough. Although in the interests of full transparency, one thing that you should realise is that one of the reasons why my attack aircraft were getting spanked so comprehensively by tier 7 cruisers, which you should kind of expect, but also by tier 6 destroyers is because HMS Furious, and this is just a work in progress, but HMS Furious's attack aircraft, in fact all of her aircraft, are tier 5 aircraft, despite the fact that the Furious is a tier 6 carrier. You'll notice this of certain aircraft carriers. The Saipan, for example, which is a premium tier 8, actually has tier 10 aircraft. Not that it really seems to help <laughs> if you get into a tier 10 battle which I will provide you examples of shortly. But also, you have to bear in mind that there are various different equipment modules and crew skills that you can take for your carriers, which will increase the durability, for want of a better word, of certain types of aircraft on the flight decks of those carriers. For example, here on the Furious, I've chosen to use equipment fits that extend the durability of my torpedo bombers and not my attack aircraft or my dive bombers. So you can see these fairy albacores, even though they're exactly the same tier as the Blackburn skewers, which comprise my attack and dive bomber squadrons, they have a lot more health. 7,400 compared to around 6,500, for example, for the Blackburn skewer attack and dive bombers. So these guys, at least, should be able to take a bit more of a beating. And in fact, as you can see, they can. It's going to be real bad news for that Sharmhorst, even though these are just tier 5 aircraft, and he is a very powerful tier 7 battleship. Okay, the first element got its torpedoes away, and one of those has hit, although it didn't cause any flooding. That means those two aircraft are on the way back to the carrier. They did not get shot down. 
swinging around for a second attack. And he's getting well stuck into that Bismol. And again, he's not actually shooting any of these aircraft down before they're getting their torpedoes away. So those two are now on their way back to the carrier, which means I'm going to be able to recycle this squadron very quickly because none of them so far have been shot down. And there are another two torpedo hits. And he's flooding. And I know he's going to keep flooding because he's on fire, which means he hasn't used his damage control. Got the final two aircraft in the squadron making their last attack run, and I'm using the engine boost to reduce the amount of time that I'm going to spend getting shot at my anti-aircraft guns, and he's run himself around, and there is absolutely no way these are ever going to miss. So we have sunk the Scharnhorst. Now I picked the Scharnhorst as a target with great care, because he'd managed to isolate himself from the rest of his team. And that's pretty much what you have to do if you're a bottom-tier aircraft carrier. I mean, you saw what happened when I inadvertently strayed into the no-fun zone around a tier 7 anti-aircraft cruiser like the USS Helena. I lost half the squadron before I even knew I was coming under fire. But if anybody tries to tell you that it's just impossible to do anything if you're a bottom-tier aircraft carrier, if you're a tier 6 in a tier 8 battle, or if you're a tier 8 in a tier 10 battle, well, they're mostly just talking out of their arse. Mostly. But not completely. I mean, if you use a bit of imagination, there are still ways that you can support your team, even as a bottom-tier aircraft carrier. It's just hard. And that's why, for the life of me, I just do not understand why Wargaming made the decision to pull all of the odd-tiered aircraft carriers. Why are there no tier 5, 7, or 9 aircraft carriers? It's not like they don't have the models. A couple of days ago, we had plenty of tier 5, 7, and 9 aircraft carriers, but for reasons known only to themselves, and for which I don't think I've ever heard them explain why, even tiered aircraft carriers are all we have. Nevertheless, using a bit of imagination, I was able to be useful to my team in this battle. I was able to deny caps to enemy destroyers, take advantage of isolated enemy battleships, and generally make myself useful. But what happens if you're bottom tier, and there are no isolated enemy ships for you to pounce on like a vulture and even the destroyers are capable of shredding your strongest squadron. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tier 10 battles in a tier 8 aircraft carrier. You can tell how much fun this is going to be just from looking at the loading screen. Although, as I mentioned earlier, this is the USS Saipan. It's a premium tier 8 American aircraft carrier. And the unique thing about the Saipan is that while the carrier is tier 8, all of its aircraft are tier 10. Now before you get too excited about having tier 10 aircraft on the tier 8 aircraft carrier, you have to bear in mind that to make up for that, the Saipan squadrons are kind of on the small side. These F-8F Bearcat attack planes only fly out in squadrons of 6. Each time they conduct an attack, they will only strike with two aircraft, which means that as long as I don't get any of them shot down, I'll be able to conduct three strikes. But the F-8F Bearcats on the Saipan have another little ace up their sleeve, because they're armed with the Tiny Tim rocket. And each aircraft conducting an attack is going to fire three of them at the same time. So that's six of these rockets. And these are seriously big rockets. Oh, enemy strike package heading the other way. I'm going to drop my fighter consumable, and he's almost certainly done the same, so I'm not going to hang around. Now unfortunately, while destroyers are normally my prey of choice when I'm in an attack aircraft, it's been my experience thus far that most tier 9 and 10 destroyer captains have played one or two games, said nope, <laughs> and gone back to playing other things or lower tier destroyers until the smoke clears and all the fuss dies down. Which means I don't really have an awful lot of choice here other than to attack tier 10 battleships and cruisers. But these rockets are serious business. 68 millimeters of high explosive penetration, 5,400 damage each. That's over 10,000 damage done to the Montana and set him on fire. But that's all I'm going to get to do because there's no way these Bearcats are going to survive to conduct a second and third strike. That was a serious amount of overlapping anti-aircraft firepower. And that's going to be a continual problem for the rest of this battle. Because the enemy team, possibly because they've played a couple of tier 9 and 10 battles by now, after the carrier rework went live and they know what to expect. <laughs> um, yeah, let's be generous and let's say it's teamwork. They're all huddling together to provide each other with multiple overlapping zones of anti-aircraft firepower. Let's, let's say it's teamwork 
and not that they're all camping the spawn and refusing to come out. But there are just no isolated enemy ships for me to pounce on. Not in this game. It just never happened. At all. Ever. I was never getting shot at by any less than two anti-aircraft cruisers any time I got close enough to actually think about attacking something. Now, I've been binge-watching a lot of Aussie Man's videos lately. Nothing to do with World of Warships. Uh, I just think the guy's hilarious. So, we're going to use one of Aussie Man's favourite phrases to describe what happens as I attempt to conduct a strike on this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have just arrived at Destination Fucked. <laughs> and don't forget, these are Tier 10 aircraft. Well, okay. I mean... I shouldn't possibly have expected to be able to survive that attack. I was flying within the anti-aircraft bubbles of a Montana, which is bad enough by itself, but also a Grosser first, a Dmitry Donskoy, possibly also an Amagi, and a Worcester. But it wasn't that I wasn't able to survive the attack. I mean, of course I wasn't going to survive that attack, but I couldn't even get the attack off. <laughs> it was just, nope, you've just arrived at destination fucked, mate. Well, okay, let's try again. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you just noticed that. And you probably didn't notice it because not all elements of the user interface are actually visible during replays since the patch went live. What I actually did there, the reason why I pulled up the mini-map was because I was issuing autopilot orders to the captain of the Saipan. I mean, if you look at the map, there's nobody over here but me and that turret. So this is a very, very bad place to be. So I pulled up the mini-map and I issued an autopilot order to turn the ship around and sail to the west. And I'm, I'm trying to get over here as quickly as I can to drop my fighter consumable to at least attempt to do something about the strike being launched against that turpid. And oh shit, it's a Worcester. <laughs> God no. Yeah, time to get the hell out of here, mate. I don't know why I'm Australian all of a sudden. Uh, <laughs> like I said, I've been binge watching far too many Aussie Man videos lately. Um, but yeah, let's 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 get away from the Worcester. I mean, the Worcester has isolated himself. In fact, as best as I can tell, that Worcester is the only ship on the enemy team who is not currently sitting inside multiple concentric anti-aircraft firepower envelopes. But then again, he doesn't need to, does he? He's a Worcester. <laughs> so I'm not attacking him. Are you mad? Once again, I pulled up the minimap because, as far as I can tell, my carrier is still heading east, and I'm pretty damn sure I issued an autopilot instruction for it to turn around and sail west. So I've issued another autopilot instruction and then back to the torpedo bombers. And once again, I'm looking for something that I can actually strike without getting shot at by multiple sources of anti-aircraft firepower. But there isn't anything. And this Amagi, well, it's only tier eight. You never know your luck. But yeah, misjudged the speed that he was traveling at. None of those torpedoes are going to hit. And once again, we have just arrived at destination fact. Why is the carrier sailing backwards? <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice that? I mean, I told you to head west, and he's heading west. I can't help but feel we'd be heading west a little bit faster if the ship was turned around and actually pointing in the right direction. This is actually something that we community contributors brought up with Wargaming as a bug in the first round of aircraft carrier testing on the test server, and they said, yep. Well spotted, thank you, we'll add that one to the list. And then a couple of days later they said, yep, that one's fixed. Yeah, I don't think so. I think, in fact, well and truly not. I would even go so far as to say that it is well and truly unfixed. And I believe I've just proven it. Never mind. Right, if I'm going to find an isolated ship, surely it's going to be out on the flank somewhere. Now, I'm aware that the Worcester is out on the flank as well, and I don't really want to get any closer to him than I need to. There he is. Although actually he has taken a lot of damage and he's continuing to take damage. So maybe he's had most of his anti-aircraft guns knocked out. Only one way to find out. These are seriously big rockets. Now I'm assuming that the Worcester has bolstered his AA defences on this side. So we get the attack off and it was absolutely pathetic. And now we're flying on what should be the side with only 75% of his anti-aircraft firepower. And my aircraft are still getting wrecked. And there's no way he has all of his anti-aircraft guns still intact at this point. And I just can't do anything with his squadron. They don't have enough health. So, back to the flight deck of the 
carrier that's still sailing backwards, well, it is at least heading in the right direction. You know, you've got to try and look on the bright side. But what can I launch? I don't have a single full squadron. I mean, I almost have a full squadron of dive bombers. So, okay. High explosive dive bombers it is. By now, the Worcester's been sunk, so I'm clear to make an attack run. And at the moment, the likeliest target is looking like the enemy Amagi over there, who's on about half health, so he's almost certainly not got all of his defensive and the aircraft guns intact. And might not actually be within the defensive envelope of any other enemy ships, although possibly that Dmitry Donskoy over there to the left. But attacking anybody else would be suicide, because they're all clubbed together. And, well, the Amagi's only tier 8, so Amagi it is. And I am actually just inside the long-range bubble of the Donskoy, but it's just one tier 9 cruiser, and that's just the tier 8 battleship. And once again, I have just had my passport stamped upon arrival at destination fucked. I cannot help but feel that if there were some, oh, I don't know, maybe tier 9 aircraft carriers in the matchmaking pool, this would not be quite such a depressingly regular feature of current aircraft carrier gameplay at tier 8. And for that matter, at tier 6 as well. Although it's not quite as bad down at tier 6. I mean, it's it's not great down at tier 6, but here at tier 8, it's absolutely brutal. Tier 8, 9 and 10 cruisers and battleships with strong anti-aircraft defences appear to be having a great time. There's no shortage of things for them to shoot down. Although I suspect even they are having problems with tier 10 aircraft carriers. Also, you have to take into consideration the fact that there are suddenly, obviously, a lot more aircraft around for people to worry about, which means you're not just paying attention to the ships that you're shooting at. You have to keep pulling back and checking the skies and the mini-map to see where you should be focusing your anti-aircraft firepower. And let's be honest, aircraft carriers up until now have been so miserably underrepresented because they were so difficult to play. People are kind of used to having games that mostly never have an aircraft carrier in, so they're not actually used to constantly having to be scanning the skies and figuring out where they need to focus their defensive anti-aircraft firepower. So it's really hard at the moment not just because of the sheer volume of people playing aircraft carriers all of a sudden, and also the sheer volume of people who are suddenly playing specialised anti-aircraft cruisers and battleships all of a sudden, and all of the people, particularly in Tier 10 battles, who have just completely given up on playing destroyers until the smoke clears and everybody calms the fuck down. So on the one hand, it's suddenly a whole lot easier to play an aircraft carrier because there are so fewer things that you have to concentrate on at the same time. And yet, it's so much more complicated to play anything other than an aircraft carrier, because there are suddenly so many more aircraft around for you to worry about that you probably never really had to care about before. And all of this, of course, is a direct consequence of the fact that this is all so new. It, the novelty factor is still there. Everybody's playing carriers, and everybody's playing against carriers. And hardly anybody's doing anything else. So it's really hard at the moment to draw conclusions. I mean, it's kind of ironic that Wargaming have moved things from the test server to the live server precisely for the reason that it's impossible to gain any further useful data on the test server. Because on the test server, everybody's either playing carriers or they're playing against carriers. And yet that's exactly what we're currently seeing on the live server. I mean, I have no doubt that, give it a week or so, everybody will calm down and we'll finally be able to figure out what the new meta is. Because make no mistake, the game has changed. But at the moment, it's far too early to say exactly what sort of state the game is in. Two things that I can say are that I don't actually hate playing aircraft carriers now. At least not Tier 4 and Tier 10 aircraft carriers, Tier 6 and Tier 8 at the moment. Yeah, not so much. And I don't hate playing against them anymore, either. Well, at least as long as I'm not on a destroyer. You see, this is the thing. When you introduce a change to a game as big as this aircraft carrier rework... Yeah, okay, obviously, aircraft carrier gameplay has changed drastically. But everybody else's gameplay has changed as well. And I'm talking here beyond the obvious, suddenly there are a lot more aircraft around. The meta of the game has changed, and at the moment nobody really knows how to deal with that. Now we've seen things like this before, that have often been held up of examples of how Wargaming have broken the game. When Radar was introduced, suddenly everybody was saying the game's now been broken for destroyers, now it's impossible for destroyers to play. GG Wargaming, you broke the game. Well, of course they didn't, but it did change the meta of the game. 
and destroyer captains in particular, and cruiser captains to a lesser degree, because they were the ones with the radar, at least initially, suddenly had to figure out how to best work around this new radar-heavy environment in higher tier games. And people who adapted to the change continued to be successful and win matches. And the people who did not adapt to the change and continued to just rush the cap in tier 8, 9 and 10 battles right at the start of the match, get radared and die in the first three minutes, well, they're the ones with 5,000 battles played in destroyers and a 35% win rating. And we're all kind of in that boat now. This change to aircraft carriers, for better or for worse, has completely changed the way the game works. Not just for aircraft carriers, although more obviously for aircraft carriers, but it's also... If you want to continue doing well in World of Warships, change the game for destroyer, cruiser and battleship captains. And until we figure out exactly how we should be working both with and against the new aircraft carriers, it's going to be a bumpy ride. But I'm pretty keen to see how it all turns out. And I will be playing more aircraft carriers now. Although I'm probably staying away from tier 6 and tier 8 aircraft carriers for at least the next week. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.